Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a closer look at Fujifilm ST T30. So let's dive right into it. Now, first you have to understand what is this camera. Now, this is a, what we classify as a starter camera. This is basically what Fujifilm is trying to do is basically make you buy your first Fujifilm camera. Basically, if you want to get into photography and you don't have a boatload of money and uh, you are not sure about it, this sort of camera is what we classify as a starter camera. Basically, you buy this and you get into photography. Now, it's a small camera. It's a very small camera. If you have a big hand, it will literally fit in your, your hand. So it's a very small camera and it's easy to use. That's the whole point of Fujifilm it's very easy to use and it's low cost it's only $900 basically uh, same cost as Sony a6400 so this is a starter camera from Fuji very recently released so what why the heck you should buy Fuji versus let's say Sony Nikon and Canon or even Panasonic now you have to understand Fujifilm is one of those few com camera company that is limited to one sensor format which is APS-C so everything so, uh, uh, Fujifilm can do does come to basically uh, APS-C system. Now, what does that translate to? Think of it this way. If Sony wants to make a very great APS-C camera, it would be expensive because nowadays sensor itself is not the most expensive part. Other surrounding electronics are very expensive like memory chips, uh, processor chip, uh, LCD screen, uh, electronic viewfinder screen, buttons, uh, controls, dials, battery. These things are very expensive. And in early days, that was not the case, but now it is. So in this scenario, Sony is uh, kind of limited. If they want to give you latest and greatest in APS-C, the problem would be the cost will be too high so let's say they try to do that and they give you a very great uh, let's say APS-C camera but it's now $2,000 then people will ask why is the hell should I spend $2,000 and uh, buy a APS-C versus $2,000 uh, full frame from Sony itself so this creates a paradox that's why from Sony Nikon and Canon none of these companies put their you know their best of the best of the best into APS-C so sometimes they do release very good cameras but none of them are like you know latest and greatest in autofocus technology latest greatest in video features so sometimes you can find you know unique things here and there but overall if you look at it you will never get the best as Nikon has to offer in APS-C best a Nikon has to uh, best a Canon has to offer in APS-C best a Can uh, Sony has to offer in APS-C for this reason this is the unique part about Fujifilm that they will give you the best Fujifilm can do and they only make one another format which is a medium format camera and you if you're worried about it don't worry too much about it simply because that camera is what we class as low volume basically they are not meant to sell millions of them so each camera is very expensive and uh, they're very uh now classified as expensive is a relative term because the cheapest you can find is ten thousand dollar camera now compared to other medium format that those go up to forty to fifty thousand dollar camera F uh, i'm not talking movie camera i'm talking still camera so from their point of view it's very cheap and uh, fujifilm has two independent branches right now one they have x sensor and one they have gfx sensor so do not worry about it so at this point for all intents and purpose fujifilm is aps-c loss so they fujifilm will put the latest and greatest they can do in APS-C, you will be never limited by like oh fuji can do this but they are only doing it that for G gfx that's not gonna happen now because fujifilm is so focused on this uh, compared to every other manufacturer uh, fujifilm has really good lens selection very good lens selection they have already built it over the course of years so that gives you a very good rich lens selection right now like if you just want to go to a shop you will find better quality aps-c lens in fuji than any other manufacturer and they this is their unique selling point this is the reason why fujifilm is still hanging on is basically they give you a lot of manual control because if you are familiar with old film camera everything used to have its own dial you wanted to change let's say shutter speed you had a dial you wanted to change uh, exposure compensation you had a dial these sort of things some people miss now of course let's say you don't miss it this won't be a good thing for you heck this will be a uh, harassment uh, basically a hassle for you but let's say in simple scenario you like this sort of thing you want to experience what it's like to change aperture directly these lenses generally have their aperture ring control outside you can directly change it old nikon used to have it old canon used to have it but uh, they have removed it for uh, you know sake of faster camera lenses these on the other hand is completely manual you can enjoy that manual feel so some people seek that some people is like oh i want that manual feel. i want to enjoy photography i just don't want to be like you know okay this is a pointing my camera and pressing a button some people enjoy that so if you are one of those, Fujifilm is the only option you have. 
and they have uniqueness to it right now if i give you a uh, nikon versus canon and if i remove the logo you will not be able to tell the tell them apart like of course you will be able to, like if you know that but both of them are black boxes if i give you sony yeah it just does not have that viewfinder hump but it's still a black box so, but in fuji Fuji actually put some effort and design language into their camera so you can actually carry this in public and people will be like oh that's nice because it's completely different compared to all these three manufacturers so that's their unique unique selling point if you look into it like if this is the thing that matters to you this Fuji film is the only option you have then we come to the pro aspect of xt 30 what are the pro aspect first the sensor is extra sensor now that does not make too much of a difference however this is a new sensor design that allows for faster readout what does that mean less lowering shutter uh, less rolling shutter that will tr directly translate to if you do what we classify as silent shooting basically you will not have a shutter going up and down this will give you much better output than any other APS-C in the market at this point in time so that is very tangible benefit so let's say you want to do let's say you are in a wedding scenario or in a, inside a church and you want to do what we classify as silent shooting and you you will not have your shutter going up and down khatang, khatang, khatang. this will give you a much better out and you can move around also so those are real benefits that will actually translate uh, you know into good photographs then we come to a very interesting aspect it has no crop in 4k now of course canon is infamous for cropping even though sony also does it but be mindful sony does a little bit now in sony aps they still do little bit here there is no little bit now that is very crucial let's say you went out uh, for let's say some uh, grand tour and you saw a building you're like dude this is a good building i want to capture a video of it awesome you went into your video mode you activate 4k and you're like hey wait a minute why it's cropped now to uncrop it all you have to do is buy a new lens but you may not have it or you may not be carrying it with you that really translates to a lot and especially on the wide end not on not that much on tele end but on a wide end this does make a difference every millimeter you especially in wide makes a very dramatic difference so difference between a 20 millimeter lens versus 18 millimeter is ginormous so that's a very good thing now this is another unique selling point of Fuji film is that you take a photo the JPEG that flat out comes out of your camera it's undeniably better than the rest now, undeniably the JPEG that comes out of a Fuji film cameras are really really good why because Fuji film is much more experienced than uh, a, any other company in making films Fuji film used to make uh, actual film roles and they were the second competitor to uh, basically Kotak so they actually understand color much better than any other company so that does translate into the if they give you an option let's say monochrome they actually know how a good monochrome because they know how a film camera is supposed to look they can give you that feel so if you are just like hey i want to just shoot some photo and share it on instagram this will tangibly give you a much better experience of enjoying this because you can just like jpeg transfer done go home that's awesome with this now it also has mic in using 2.5 millimeter jack and it has USB C, which they are using uh, wisely because you can charge it you can transfer data with using this and you can use USB C headphones now if you don't have USB C headphone you can also buy a cheap dongle so that's awesome and it has joystick now this is a tangibly good feature because if you are doing any sort of photography where you want, where you want to manually control the autofocus point basically uh, the block uh, green green box that you have this is the best option there is touch screen does not even help nothing helps but other than this basically you have to have a thumbstick to quickly change it like if you have the luxury of time it does not make that much of a difference but if you are just looking at it and you're like i want to focus on this i don't care like there's somebody interesting there or not i want to do that this will really help you this is a tangibly good uh, basically option to have in a 900 dollar camera this is really good so these are the pro then question becomes how does it uh, like you know compare against a6400 now you can make, check my full video detail about a6400 here but you have to understand flat out this has better autofocus now when i say this has better autofocus does not mean that uh, xt30 misses autofocus it simply translates to if let's say you took 100 photo xt30 will barely uh, can give you 80 photos that are in good focus uh, while sony can give you 90 nobody reaches 100 percent so that really translates to a very good hit rate on top of that sony from day one making lenses that are very very fast so that tr also translates into another thing so let's say you're doing this quickly quickly doing this sony will give you a better result because sony lenses first native mount lenses are very fast now the latest and greatest of this is sony's g master series f30 uh, 135 uh, millimeter lenses which is a prime lens and it's undeniably horrifyingly fast like people are surprised how fast it is like nothing neither from canon nor from uh, nikon anything comes even close to how fast that lens is now 
is uh, Fuji lenses are slow? Yes, uh, reliably because the motor system they are using in the lenses are old generation. So you have to wait for uh, Fuji to update their whole lens lineup before you get really fast autofocus. Now, what does that does? Uh, so what does that mean for you basically in simple sense if you are doing a lot of uh, you know random pointings uh, you will find sony to be much faster now if you have the luxury of time it would not make a difference flip up screen for some reason even though fuji film themselves released in 2018 xt 100 which is a cheaper camera has a flip out screen does not have flip out screen in xt 30 for some reason that is tangibly you know uh, i i do not understand it like sony has flip up screen now it's better than uh, not having a flip up screen but it's not as good as side screen but okay it has something now if it, this is important for you for selfie reasons you have to buy this you cannot buy fuji on top of that now you have to understand in video world there was a very weird thing that european union did is that they're like okay if your camera can record more than 30 minutes this will be classified as a video camera and you're gonna pay higher tax because it's a video camera to avoid paying higher taxes uh, for uh, basically products company decided to cap video limit to 29.59 seconds now that's worked out well so far however in 2019 uh, european union removed that tax limitation the first company to utilize this is Sony so at this point in time you can buy a Sony camera that will record as long as memory card is there as long as there is battery in there and as long as it's not overheated now then you might be saying okay what's the point if it overheats after 30 minutes no it does overheat after like one and a half hour people have successfully like if you are in a cold room it will go up to two hours so that's a very long time for continuous even live broadcast you can do on this so that's a very good thing but in Fuji they went even down before from like 30 minutes they went to 10 minutes if you're doing 4k you only get 10 minutes and if you do basically uh, 50, uh, full HD recording you can only go up to uh, 15 minutes that is really really strange the best way I can figure out how why this is happening is simply because they are using an old file system which was like fat file system which is limited to 4 gigabyte file so you will only get one 4 gigabyte file now I'm really hoping this is changed in firmware or something else because this is really stupid like 10 minutes and 15 minutes at least I can understand in 4k no problem okay in 4k you said but in full HD that's just sad now again okay, let's say you change your mind and you want to like hey I want to go to full frame Sony allows you that option Fujifilm does not right now you buy you can buy a6400 and you can buy a full frame lens of course they are big and bulky but again you need uh, to have big and bulky lenses for good image quality like there is no uh, you know physics uh, denying about it so if you see people like oh no you can get a small lens and get good image quality yes undeniably so but a smaller lens will undeniably will suffer from vignetting it will suffer from chromatic aberration it will suffer from fr uh, fringings those things happen to compensate for that people make big lenses the engineers that are making big lenses they are not stupid they know you have to have big lenses and that's why we make telescopes that are like freaking 100 meters long so you have to have big lenses so let's say you right now you bought a full frame lens and you put it on the sony you can enjoy it you can like really keep it working for let's say two three years and then you're like okay now i have another money for full frame upgrade awesome your lenses won't be thrown out that is amazing that can be done with nikon that can be done with canon that can be done with sony it cannot be done with fuji and not to mention fuji gfx lenses are on a whole different level and on top of that, let's say you are okay with APS-C. You're like, I, I thoroughly know myself. I'm going to be happy with APS-C. There is no third party lens support. This is crucial aspect. Basically, you can go to Sigma and be like, okay, hey, I want APS-C lens. Sigma is going to help you. You want to go Tamron. Tamron, I want APS-C lens. Sigma, uh, Sony can help you with that and Sony will accept it. You go to Fujifilm, there is no third party support. Maybe you can find one or two manufacturers that makes a few lenses and because they are making few lenses, those lenses are very expensive. So you do not have a very good support of third party lenses and many people flat out say you don't have any support. So this is crucial. For this reason, if these things make sense to you, go with Sony. If does not, like if you are okay with Fujifilm, because Fujifilm does give you certain USP that is not present to all three manufacturers. If you are okay with that, go with that. If you're not, use this. So this was my presentation on uh, Fujifilm X-T30. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please leave a like and uh, click the ads that are shown in this video. That will directly help me. If you didn't like it, press dislike. I would urge you to press this twice to show me your extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.